So this is all about the new House of the Dead remake that just came out on the Nintendo Switch. It had a long time in the kettle. Rumors, when's it coming? What type of controls is it going to have? And we're going to get into all of that, but we felt it would best serve this video to start out with a little history on House of the Dead 1. Yes, the game that started it all. So, House of the Dead started off as an arcade game that came out in 1996 in Japan and then worldwide in 1997. And then... It was finally ported to the Sega Saturn, a home release yes. of House of the Dead in March of 1998. That was a big deal, it, too, because it was a big this deal. is kind of right at that uh, that point where arcade ports were almost arcade perfect. Now, this port, Ugh. it's okay. Yeah, it's okay. It's, it's fun to play. It's cool that you could play it at home. Yeah. It's definitely a downgrade graphics-wise, and it's a lot simpler, And but it's still cool to be able to play at home. Yeah. And I will say I do miss Saturn mode. That mode's really cool because it's the same game, but you can choose different characters, and I thought that was really cool. It kicked off an awesome franchise. House of the Dead 2, House of the Dead 3, House of the Dead 4, House of the Dead Overkill, House of the Dead Scarlet Dawn. Then it started all these offshoots. The House of the Dead universe is crazy. Yeah, you get into your typing of the deads. The zombie revenge on the Dreamcast. Oh, that I believe it was awesome. an arcade game as well, but that's based in the House of the Dead universe. You got House of the Dead Pinball. You've got House of the Dead EX. So many crazy things in a lot of these games. You know, you mentioned 2, 3, 4, Overkill, Scarlet Dawn. Got home console releases and arcade releases. Scarlet Dawn, only in the arcade. Yeah. Overkill, only on the home console. But since 1996, this franchise has had legs. It has been around for a long time. It's been a staple in a lot of arcades and households. And you know, when you talk to most light gun fans, it's kind of a tug of war between Time Crisis and House of the Dead of what yes. is the best light gun franchise of all time. It's it's tough. I, I think we love House of the Dead more because like history for us, the channel was started because of House of the Dead. The yeah. channel was started because of House of the Dead Overkill, and then we've gone through the whole series. We love how cheesy and ridiculous and yeah. how difficult and just how over the top. We just love the whole franchise. Well, we're like B-grade horror fans yeah. and light gun fans, and it's like the perfect, beautiful marriage of both. <laughs> and so that's why we're such big fans of House of the Dead. The journey for House of the Dead, the remake, has been kind of out of control. We had a pocket of almost a year's worth of time where there was radio silence. Yeah. So we started hearing leaks about this thing back in September of 2019 and we did a video on it. Yeah, September 2019, before COVID was even a thing. Think about that. That's how crazy. Yeah. This has been in the making for two and a half years. So there was rumors about it. Forever Entertainment was going to do like a House of the Dead 1 and 2 remake. We were so excited. We were like, yes, we did a video on it. And then we didn't hear anything till 2021. Yeah. That's insane. Literally nothing. Yeah, I think it was revealed by Nintendo in April of 2021. Got the hype train rolling. But there was very little information about yeah, so it. Yes, we still didn't know what was... Yeah, you could see the graphics. But I think the question on everybody's mind is, there's no light gun on the Switch. How are they going to do this? Are they going to be able to pull it off with a Joy-Con? Is it going to get ported to other consoles? Because when that leak initially came out in 2019, I think it was believed Google Stadia was going to get oh, a release. Yeah. Uh, the Switch was going to get a release presumably like an Xbox uh, whatever series, Place, whatever, yeah, a PlayStation, PlayStation yeah. 4 or 5, whatever. Um, but as of right now, it's just a Nintendo Switch exclusive. There are rumors of it getting ported elsewhere, PlayStation Stadia, yeah. etc. But that's kind of where it's at. It was planned to be released after that reveal. It was assumed Q4 of 2021. Yeah, the end of 2021. And guess what? Radio Silence again. Didn't come out, didn't hear anything. And here we are, April. 7th? I mean, not today, but that's when it came out. April 7th, yeah. 2022, we finally get our hands on the House of the Dead 1 remake. So it started off as House of the Dead 1 and 2 remake. And they downgraded it to 1. And when you say you get your hands on it, that's kind of a unique... Because you can't touch it. Yes. It's, it's, it's only available yeah. digital. Physical is coming, but it's, yep. it's limited print, limited run kind of uh, orders, and there's no real date on that. I'm guessing it's going to be summertime, because I think you can pre-order it now, and it takes a couple months before it ships. Yeah, I don't quite it, There's know no real date. Ship, yeah. I know there's a lot of like really cool collector's editions and stuff like that where you can get statues and stuff. It looks cool, but it sucks that it's only digital right now. Yep. But it's only, like, what, $25? Yeah, I think if you pre-ordered it, you got a couple bucks off, like 10% or something. It was probably, like, 21 or 22 bucks, and then I think the full one's $29.99, $24.99, something along those lines. But... Circling back to the beginning of this whole rumor thing in 2019, it was going to be House of the Dead 1 and 2 remake. Yeah. It sounded like it was going to be a pair of which, games. Which would have been so cool, like the Tony Hawk remake. Yeah. It was the pair of them. Now, word's still out that the 2 remake is in the kettle, being worked on, so that's not like it's dead in the water, but I guess 
when I initially heard about it, I thought it was going to be kind of like House of the Dead 2 and 3 Return on the Nintendo Wii. It would be like a double pack. Yeah, I don't know why they they but, easily could have because the game it's this arcade small enough game. Like, yeah. Why couldn't they? Why couldn't they just do it? Have two different games with the same menus and everything. Yeah. I think they were just they got ahead of themselves. They got worried. And then they were like, okay, let's put out the first one, see how well it does, and then we'll see. Because there's no real word on the second one. I know they they kind of mentioned that they're working on it. Yeah. But I don't know if they're going to release it. Hopefully they do, because that'd be cool, but uh, it's it's weird. Yeah. Anyway, it was a long road to get this game into the player's hands on the Nintendo Switch. It's time for Chapter 3. It is time for the final review. We are going to look into House of the Dead remake on the Nintendo Switch. We have logged close to 10 hours on the game. Yep. We have unlocked all the weapons. I think we've probably played through it somewhere between 10 and 15 times. Yes, the different difficulties, the different game modes, yeah. one player, two player, trying all the different control mechanisms, control schemes. We've played the hell out of this game. Yeah, and we've also unlocked a lot of the, what do you call it, achievements. achievements. Yeah. yeah. Before we jump into the review, let's look at what's new in the House of the Dead remake. You know, the obvious one that jumps out is visuals. Um, a complete visual overhaul different graphic style. I do really like the graphic style. It's kind of more towards the Scarlet Dawn-esque. Yeah, yep. It doesn't lose the charm, but I, I love the visuals. It's kind of dark. It's gritty. It looks sweet. And then also another thing they added is modern scoring. So it's really cool. There's modern scoring and then there's arcade scoring. So that's that's a cool different way to play. You know? Yeah, and there's the there's cooperative score. So your points go yeah, together. Yeah, cooperative and then competitive scoring. So you can work together or you can be like, oh, I'm going to kick your ass. And guess what? I did kick your you ass. Did. I don't want to. I don't want to you know say anything but you know i'm almost double your score <laughs> you're kicking my ass I almost double. this game thrives two player it's so fun to play with another person because of things like that the uh, the textures in the environment we already touched touched on the graphics obviously but there's so much more in the environment they've added things that weren't there before yes. there's there's a bar with liquor bottles there's a you know decanter in one room like the, 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 the record player yeah. i remember we were looking at that and then like when you're in like the laboratory like all the computer screens are lit up like it it just looks really cool yeah. there's so many more new textures in it the soundtrack the soundtrack is really cool in this game i feel like it really fits there's like a cheese element to it but then a horror element to it i think it just sounds really cool especially like the main menu and then like the cutscenes. it's just like ooh, you're in the universe the uh achievements um ooh, this is a cool addition yeah it, it adds a ton of replayability i love the gallery which the achievements are housed in the gallery but you can look at the the bosses and their their weak points and, and well it's cool because it shows all the different types of zombies yeah, so you know it's not, not just not yeah. just the bosses it has the names of everything, their weak points, how to beat them, because some of them are headshots, some of them are body shots. And then the achievements is cool because it makes you want to play the games in different styles than you normally would play. Yeah. Like there's a kill all the scientists, which is fun, save all the scientists. Uh, then there's the armory, which is really cool. That's how you unlock the guns, and we'll talk about that more later. It's just really cool with the achievements and all like the things you want to unlock. It just makes you want to keep playing. It. Yeah, you, you brought up uh, Horde Mode earlier, but uh, it's, it's just a screen. It's the same game, but there's just like double, triple, quadruple the number of zombies. It's oh, insane. Dude. It's really cool. And it's, it's just fun. It just gives you a lot of different ways to play a short arcade game. And it's not this remake's fault. The game's only 20 minutes long. It's only it's, as long as it is. Yeah, it's just, that's the game. Yeah, but these extra things, I, I feel like, add to the replay value. Graphics. Yes, okay, so obviously this is a arcade remake. I will say this game looks really cool, especially when you compare it to the original Sega Saturn version, which is a downgrade of the arcade, I know. But it looks really sweet. They put a lot of detail into it. I like the way the zombies look, the different type of zombies, the decorations of like the mansion and all this stuff. It looks sweet. I will say one downgrade of the graphics, the menus. Yeah. The menus look like ass. <laughs> you can't even, it's so hard to read the words. Yeah. Like it's like they use the, uh, the weirdest font they could yep. pick and it's so small. There's there's a couple things in the achievements that I don't even know what it says. Yeah, I'm like what does that say? It's brutal. I mean, you're making me laugh, but you you can't overstate how bad they are. Dude, I mean, they're they're horrible. How I don't know how they messed up the menu so bad, <laughs> especially when you pause the game and go into options. Yeah, there's so many things you can do in mm -hmm. options. 
you can't even read half of them. Mm -hmm. So good luck even doing it. I mean, you can, obviously. I'm over-exaggerating, yeah. but it's hard. Yeah. You have to, like, squint and be like, what does that say? <laughs> yeah, it's oh, wild. X axis. Okay, I can read it now. Yeah. But overall, the game does look sweet. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm happy with how it looks. I didn't expect to be blown away. Yeah, it's an arcade game. I don't think this game is, like, you know, current gen pushing the envelope, but it looks about how I thought it was going to look. I'm not going to give them an... Uh, I do, like you mentioned, the details in the mansion and stuff that weren't in the original game. Yeah, they cool. spent a lot of time with, the, yeah, with that because stuff. because they kind of were, like, just freelancing, yeah. being like, oh, what would be here? Yeah. Oh, and dishes. And you stuff. know, not to get, you know, too far off the beaten path, because we have a tips and tricks section that you're going to want to stay tuned for, but, like, when you have the pitter gun that shoots the wooden stakes... Oh, my and God. You, like, and you, like, pin a zombie into a wall. so cool, or pin a scientist. Yeah. Dude, it's cool. Like, that makes the game really fun. I don't know if this kind of ties into graphics or just overall, but for being a simple arcade game, there's slowdown, there's lag, there's some frame rate issues. It could be because the Switch isn't that powerful, but also this isn't that powerful of a game. Yeah. So I don't, it's weird. There is. Especially when you start using like the upgraded guns and stuff, yep. it really like bogs it down. There yeah. was an area that we glitched out and we couldn't, we just got stuck at the the gate. Yeah, it just it wouldn't open. It, 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 okay, it didn't freeze. The game just stalled. We could still move, we could still shoot, but it just wasn't loading the next It wasn't scene. opening the door. So it's kind of a buggy mess. Reload! Just when you look at graphics, do you think it's fair to say a 3.5? I think they're good. Yeah, I, think I think they're decent. I think for, for what it is, it's an arcade game. Yeah. 3.5, I think that's great. All right, moving on to the sound of the game. So House of the Dead, if you guys are not longtime fans of the series, is notorious for having some of the worst voice acting of all time. No, I here. Don't be! But that's a good thing. That's that's why we a lot of people don't like it. Yeah. That's why we like yeah, it. Yeah, that's part of the charm of yeah. the game. I was thinking, man, if they over polish this thing, it's gonna lose its the essence and the spirit. I felt like they found that good middle ground. They definitely it sounds reworked. Yeah. But it's not super polished and professional. It's just uh, it's still got some cheese on that taco. No, I think the, the sound overall is really good. There's one annoying thing about the game, and there's no way to shut it off, and there's no way to avoid it, because it's going to happen no matter how you play it, no matter what gun you use, and that's the reload voice. And it's Dude. way louder than in the original, I feel like. I feel like it just pierces. We were like, oh, let's just go into sound settings and shut this bastard off. You can't shut it off. No. You'd have to, like, shut off all voice to shut it off, but then you would lose the voice act. Yeah. Which, I mean, I guess that's in it, but we like that part. Yeah. It, it, that's the only annoying part. So for sound, I'm going to give it a four. Yeah. It's an arcade game. It is what it is, and I think and I think it serves the game. Yeah, you know? I think it does just fine. I, I mean, I think it, it sounds the way it should. It's not it's not a hindrance to the game. Yeah. Definitely not blowing anything we uh, out of the water, but we had it on surround sound, and it was a good experience, immersive. We were there. We were in the castle, Carrion's castle, mansion, mansion whatever the hell yeah. it is, and uh, we were having a good time. I know going into this, we were excited, and then we started thinking about how's it going to control, so then our excitement went down, and we were like, the Joy-Cons aren't light guns. We knew that going into it. And we were right. Yes. The controls suck ass. So you got to remember to reload and recenter yeah, pretty much every, after every, every so fucking you gotta, battle. You got to fucking press two if buttons. Not sooner. You know, I keep pressing the reset button instead of the reload button. Oh my god! And then every time you reset, you got to figure out where where it put you. They're terrible controls because House of the Dead is a light gun game. Yeah. It's it, it doesn't work as a light gun game. Obviously, you can still play it but you have to play it differently than a like on game so it's playable you just can't play it like a like on game from the jump we knew that was going to be the achilles yep. heel you already kind of talked about that and you know i i have seen comments of saying well you, you just don't know how to use the gyro controls we know how to use them we've yep. played the shit out of this game the point of this whole thing it, is we knew that they were not designed to be a light gun. I've been kind of joking around when we're streaming, this game should have been called House of the Dead Point and Click Adventure because that's what it feels like. It does not feel like you're playing a traditional light gun game, which that's what House of the Dead is. Yeah. And I've seen also reviews where people are like, oh, control's great. 
it, I, I mean, to differ. Once once you, once you figure it out and adapt and play it the w the way it's designed to be played, yeah. then yeah, it plays. It works that way, but it's not a it's not a like on game. Yeah, it's 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 a catch twenty two because I do think they made the most of the controls that they could with the gyro yeah. controls. And they if, drift when you, like when, crazy. When you put it into that perspective, it's like they did about as good as you could do with them, I feel like. I'm just gonna go right out and say the controls are probably somewhere between a one and a two. So here's the problem. House of the Dead is a light gun game. You can't play this like a light gun game. You have to rewire your brain on how to play it and relearn and adapt yep. it to this game. So it's kind of confusing because it's like, do you give the score a low score because it's it's not what it's supposed to be or do you base it on what it is and then... And it's, it's a it's, tough it's, thing. It, it's not what it can't be. Yeah. This game is just, it, it was just, it's not on the right platform. There, unfortunately, for home console owners, there's really not a great platform for light gun games right now. It's better than not having it at all, probably. Yeah, it's cool that it's but here. if you're going into this thinking you're going to be playing a light gun and just shooting the zapper and going off the screen to reload one you can't do that because you you're going to lose that. all calibration the the best way if you want to play it and point and click is you want to adjust some of the sensitivity and you want to make very very small movements yeah there is a recalibrate button on the controller it's why and wherever you're holding it will recenter to that point so if i'm aiming here it's going to recenter there and then right yeah and then it just shifts and then it from there it just starts drifting Oh, it drifts so bad. I like how your drift's going down. I don't even know where my controller is right. Your drift's going down, my drift goes to the left. I was seeing in their live stream, it's a, it's a vicious tap dance between A, B, and Y. You can shoot with the, the R trigger, but it makes it very cumbersome if you've got to then reload and recalibrate. Yeah, you it's might just as well just awkward. shoot with A. So then, so then you're getting away from the light gun yeah. experience even more. And so then A, pound an A, B to reload, Y to recenter. We ended up turning on auto reload, which seems cheap and we would never do in a House of the Dead game, but it's because you have to hit the recalibration almost at the frequency yeah. that you need to reload. Now, if you get used to it, it is advised not to recalibrate when you're in the middle of shooting something or, or yeah, so, so you just want to kind of adjust. So we were there in like our stream when we were playing it, we, we were a boss fight. We were dead center, but we were aiming at the ground because we were just watching our cursor and we were like, yeah, it, our hand just kept moving. And then once we got to a moment where we could recenter, then we would. It's dude, it, it was bad, especially the first playthrough. We were getting annoyed and frustrated. The controls suck. Here's where you kind of have to learn how you like to play this game that's available to play it. Because we put on auto reload and then we just recalibrated a lot and we used the, the gyro and we adjusted the sensitivity to our likeness. I feel like it's going to be different for everyone yeah. that plays this game. Some people will play it with the joystick and move the cursor and yep. some people, like you can do handheld mode where you tilt the switch. That's kind of cool. You just got to basically play it how you want to play it, but it's not going to be a like an experience. Yes. That's I, the weird, but there's so many ways to play this. You got to yeah. find the easiest way to play it for you and the funnest, probably. So you've got the point and click adventure way to play. Like you said, you also can play like a regular controller use this as the aiming and then on handheld mode you can just tilt it's like you know those little marble games where you have to get it like into a like a little shoe. yeah we'll say that's that's really hard to do that's so how you aim luck. good luck yeah so um for light gun purists if you're going into this thinking that would frustrate me this is not for you because that's exactly how this game controls if you are such a house of the dead fan that you're like i still want to play it i still want to see it i want to see what they did with the environments you can adapt yeah because we did it's frustrating we're huge light gun fans i'm glad we played it yeah let's go into the next category fun factor because this is a game that the controls were so bad and so frustrating because it's not what it's supposed to be but yet we kept playing it for yeah. almost 10 hours yeah. it's an arcade game it takes you 20 minutes to beat yeah because it's fun you have to adapt and play it like Towards the end of our playthrough, I was sitting here like this, and I was barely moving my wrist, and that's how I was playing it. That's how I was playing a light gun game, like this. Yeah, it was fun, though. Yeah. Like, I figured out what works for me in my play style. It's obviously not how you're supposed to play House of the Dead, not how you're supposed to play a light gun game. But that's how I got it to work, and that's how I had fun with it. So fun factor is huge in this game. It is. I think we got to go a 4.5. Yeah, I'd go 4.5, just because it keeps bringing us back. It keeps making us want to play it. I keep thinking about it, dude. This game is fun. Yeah, I, I, we can't stop playing it. It, it is a game we're going to probably stream again and again. There's so many achievements we haven't finished. Yeah, it just it keeps bringing us back. Yeah. So the fun factor is huge. And it could be because we're House of the Dead freaks, but we're having a hell of a time with it. Where the fun comes in in this game is the replayability 
There's so many branching paths. Those of you who've played the original, you're not going to be surprised by the branching paths, but I think there's more of them. Yeah, dude, it's really cool. There's yeah. a lot of different paths. It seems to be a lot easier in this game to get onto those different paths because yeah. you can see so much more because of the graphics, right? Yeah, yeah. and I will say, just uh, when you brought the word easy, this game is dramatically easier than the arcade and the Saturn oh, port. Dramatically. Sure. There's four difficulties in this game. Easy, normal, hard, and arcade. Arcade is the toughest one. We put it on arcade and then we just played the Sega Saturn version arcade. We got our asses handed to us. Yeah. It's it, way easier. I feel like they had to do that because the controls, it's really it's hard to slower, be super surgical. Especially when you're saving the civilians, the zombies are, aren't as close to them in the, the arcade version. They're like right on top. Yeah. They're making it more for the masses and I get it. Yeah, the, these games, like there's a collect-a-thon element to it. Yeah. You want to know what's in all the boxes. You want to find all the gold coins. Yeah. You want to find everything. You want to find all the hidden weapons. You want to get all the achievements. There's there's so many... Re Dude, there's two different game modes. Yeah. There's normal mode and then there's horde mode where it's the same game but with 10 times the zombies or whatever and it's just out of control fun five weapons yeah dude handgun yeah crossbow pitter grenade launcher assault rifle and when we already said this game was easy when you unlock those if you're playing with someone you guys will be laughing your nuts dude, off it's ridiculous yeah but that just makes the game so much easier especially if you're going through the level with the grenade launchers boom boom oh. boom boom that goes back to fun factor yeah i'm not playing a, i'm not playing a like on game yeah the controls suck but man it's hilariously fun so this game is like it gives me mixed feelings yeah. a lot and we were just actually talking this morning we're like we are having fun playing this but damn, we wish it would have been the way dude, we wanted it to be. Dude, can you imagine if, if... If this could have been a PS3 game? Dude, can you imagine if it had all of this? But you could use the freaking Nyko Perfect Shot for the PS3 or the Wii. That would just make this game yeah, so much better. For sure, for sure. Icing on the freaking cake. It was fun. If you are a light gun purist, and you, and you don't think you can get past the controls then don't play it because I'm going to tell you this game pisses us off. Yeah. But we're such House of the Dead fans that we had to find our way to enjoy it. Because yeah, and that's that's how you have to do it. There is like that thing, right? Like, I'm just happy that House of the Dead is still around in 2022. This isn't the remake that I wish it was. With control set aside, it's pretty damn good. Yeah, it's pretty sweet. And it's cool that we have a House of the Dead game in 2022 that's shining light on a series that's freaking 20 plus years old. Like when we were streaming this, a lot of people were saying this is their first House of the Dead game they've ever played. Yeah. That's cool. It's putting it in front of new eyes. And that's like the whole point of this. Yeah. You know, maybe they'll play this and be like, oh, there's other ones in the series. And then they go back to them. Like it's all about awareness and... And we're still holding out hope. This may just be the tip of the iceberg. There's rumors of it coming to PlayStation in some form or fashion, whether yeah. that be the 4 or the 5. That would be really cool, especially if, VR or something. If we get a PC port of this, we already know there's light guns that work with PC. So there, this is, I think, just the beginning, hopefully, of this game getting done right somewhere down the line. But to recap, we gave the graphics a 3.5. Yep. We gave the sound a 4. Minus the annoying reload guy, it's pretty damn yeah, good. It serves the game. The controls, this is where the game shits the bed hard. I I, I gotta say like a 1.5 here, and that's rough, but I'm just being honest. Yeah, the controls suck because it's a it's it's not a like on game, but they do work for what it is. So Which is House of the Dead's yeah, point and click adventure. Yeah, it is. So once you figure out how to play it your way, it's like BK, have it your way. Yeah. <laughs> it, it makes sense and you yeah. adapt, you yeah. know? Like I was playing it like this and it made sense. But it's not, yeah. Where this game thrives, if you can get past the annoying shit with this shit, <laughs> um, fun factors through the roof at a 4.5. I think it's a great rating. So this game's all over the board. And I don't want this to come off like we're not crapping on the Joy-Cons. The Joy-Cons are fine. This is just not the application Yeah, for they them. didn't, they, yeah. The Joy-Cons work how they're supposed to work. Yeah. They're not made to be like them. Yeah. It's, it's just, not motion. That's not what they were supposed to do. So um, that's our review in a nutshell. It's really fun to unlock all the guns in this game. So it's time for some tips and tricks. Now it's time for tips and tricks by Gaming Off The Grid. To unlock all the badass guns in House of the Dead Remake, you have to save all the scientists in a single playthrough to unlock the armory in the gallery. Once you have accomplished that, there will be hidden chests remotely placed around the map. The first badass gun that you can unlock is in the first level, and it's the crossbow. To unlock the crossbow, make sure you save the scientist on the bridge, otherwise it'll take you down a different path. 
Once inside the mansion, you gotta take the path where your character turns right first and then proceeds forward through the doors at the end of the atrium. Once you're in the hallway, make sure you don't get knocked into the hole by the two Simons that come charging at you, so you gotta take them out. The next door you enter, keep your eyes peeled. Right as the camera pans to the left, there's a chest behind the pole that contains the crossbow. In level two, you will find the second unlockable weapon, which happens to be one of the coolest in the game, the Pitter. It shoots wooden stakes and can tack zombies and scientists to the wall. Keep your eyes peeled once you find yourself in the kitchen. Once you get knocked down by the table leg, zombies will bust through the wall. Behind them, on the floor, will be a chest that contains the almighty Pitter. Towards the beginning part of level three, you will find the ass-kicking grenade launcher. As you enter the lab where the security card resides, in the back right corner of the room, you will see a chest. Shoot that chest and you will unlock the grenade launcher. At the beginning of the final chapter, you have a chance to unlock the final weapon, the assault rifle. As soon as you take a hard right on the right side of the screen is the chest. Shoot, scoop, and score. Die, bitch. Die. Oh, dude, we're back. Oh, we're back. Dude, I learned a lot of stuff in yeah. this tips and tricks. Wow, dude. Tips so and tricks. Yeah. You can unlock guns, achievements. Yeah. Man, I learned a lot, but we got to talk about this beer. Yeah. So, and and uh, we also got to talk about the fact that you're not supposed to kill scientists. But anyway. Oh, dude. Yeah, honestly, dude, it's fun. <laughs> it is. Why is it so much fun to kill this thing? Especially with the pitter. <laughs> oh, dude. Just <laughs> under the wall. This is brains. We thought it was fitting for it. House of the Dead. See? Brains. Zombies. You get it. This is a double fruit smoothie sour mango orange banana. This is part of their brains series. Yeah. This is good. Drecker's a North Dakota brewery. Yep. Right? Andy. Um, very heavy on the mango. If you're not a mango fan, this isn't going to be for you. But this is delicious. Yeah, very, very juicy. Mm -hmm. Like it, it feels like I'm drinking like a mango heavy juice with other fruits yep. sprinkled in. Like it doesn't taste like a super sour, you know? I've said this about other beers they have. This reminds me a lot of like an orange Julius, like consistency. It's got a little bit of thickness to it. And those, I can't, don't know if you remember that distinct flavor those had. And I get that in this, where it was almost like a little, it was sweet, but kind of just a little tart maybe. Yeah. Um, it's very unique flavor. This has that very unique flavor. It's like, it's like a, a like a nutmeg. Or yeah. Like a, like a vanilla. Yeah. Or something yeah, no, like I'm that. picking yeah. that. That's exactly the flavor I, mean, I think it I'm getting. It says mango, more mango, orange, more orange, banana, more banana, sea salt, lactose, and vanilla bean. So vanilla. Vanilla bean. It's coming yeah. through. Maybe some of that. that's what's in an orange Julius. Some of that salt. Ooh, yeah. yeah, some of that salt. Some yeah. of that brain. Yeah. Drecker is awesome. You don't have to be a beer fan is what I'm getting at to enjoy this. I think if you like... Um, the fruits that are in here you probably would enjoy this and i don't think you would think you're drinking beer but the fun part is is this shit can get you drunk <laughs> <laughs> kill zombies drink some brains dude that's a fun that's a fun saturday friday week whatever night you're doing did it. you ever go to school with like any of them hillbilly guys and that's how they said oh, you won't get drunk <laughs> yeah with their giant dip in yeah <laughs> Let's go get drunk. <laughs> then they throw you a Keystone Light. <laughs> Yuck. Anyways, guys, House of the Dead remake. I I'm very torn. I'm very middle of the road. I'm. It's tough, dude. God, I want it to be so much more than it is. But I love the series so much that it's it's almost like you know you go and see a sequel to a movie and you're like you know that was okay, but I wanted more. But I love this series so much. Yeah. What sucks about this game? is I'm having so much fun with it. I want to keep playing mm -hmm. it. I want to play all the different things. I mean, we have. I just want to keep playing it, memorize it, keep playing it more, keep playing it more, unlock all the achievements. But yeah, every time I play it, I'm like, oh, the fucking drift. Oh, I complain about the controls. Yeah. So it's literally the funness that I'm having is bringing me back and making me think about it nonstop. Now, it has only been out for two days, and we've been playing it just a lot in two days. So how will I feel in two weeks? Maybe that feeling will go down, and maybe this might be a game that we play a lot, and then maybe yeah. not touch for a while. Yeah, you know, I, I think if you're not a purist, if you're not like a light gun gatekeeper, which I think maybe both of us come off that way sometimes, I think there is fun to be had here. But if you can't look past that control piece, then I would just steer clear because you're just going to find yourself very, very frustrated. I will say, I will say, like, go in with kind of an open mind yeah. and be willing to adapt. Because that's that's the only way you're gonna have fun with it. And once you adapt and yeah. figure out those controls, 
You can have fun with it. If you just tell yourself in your mind that I'm going to play the new House of the Dead point and click adventure, it'll probably be pretty yeah, fun. Yeah, and then just enjoy it. Yeah. You don't have to be cynical about it. The control sucks, so I'm never going to play it. Yeah. Well, what? You played for, played it for five minutes? Yeah. We play, we've been playing it for 10 hours yeah. and the controls suck and yeah. we're having fun. Yeah. Uh, and laughing a lot. Yeah, dude. So. And play it two player. Yeah. Do we recommend you go out and buy it? This game definitely falls into the bucket of read your own mail. Yeah, it's tough to recommend this game. But well, I'm glad we got it. I'm glad we got it. We're total House of the Dead fanboys. Um, this is definitely, if we had to rank the series, this is probably in last place. <laughs> but it's fun. It's House of the Dead. You're killing zombies. Yeah. You're blowing their heads off. You're tagging dudes to the wall with the pitter. <laughs> a lot of different guns. The pitter is unreal. Stakes sticking out of people. Wooden stakes. It, it is the so... The stakes are so big. Oh, so funny. It's just so funny. Yeah. I just want to play it again. And so that's what we're going to do. We're going to wrap this video yeah. and play another round of House of the Dead. All right. There you have it. That is our full, unapologetic review on House of the Dead Remake on the Nintendo Switch. We'll see you next time right here on the one and only Gaming Off the Grid. We act like we're playing. Yeah. Okay. And then just, I'll just be like, wow, I learned a lot of stuff in those tips and tricks. <laughs> yeah. He's just playing bingo and he's just always like, bingo! Yeah, they just go, not again, Charles, not again. Bingo! <sighs> Fucking Charles. Born to yell Ingo. <laughs> Should we try some brains? Yeah, brains. Zombies. Best be served to start out with a little history of what house of the house of the world house of the one house of the one dead <laughs> yeah it's this, cool this may not be the only version this may be may, maybe just <laughs> kirian there he is kirian you son of a bitch what's up w you stupid son of a bitch <laughs> i didn't think you'd make it this far because the controls suck. Because <laughs> I gave you a Joy-Con. I figured by now you would have shoved it up your ass. What are those chests, dude? I don't know. We're gonna I, want it. I want those chests so bad. I want them. I want your chest so bad, dude. <laughs> I want your box of nuts. <laughs> Let's go. Damn, we got 149 people in here. 149 people. 149. <laughs> Fucking stupid. I don't even know why that's funny. We just said numbers. Oh yeah, we got 149 people. <laughs>